is fishing in the rain. As you can see, it's raining pretty hard here at my house today. When I was younger, I used to get out in this. I thought it was cool to get out there and beat the weather. I'm a little bit older now, so I don't find quite as much joy as beating myself up in the rain as I used to. So what we're gonna do instead of me going out in the rain and trying to capture a video for you, we're gonna talk about a couple different ways to help you catch fish in the rain. seats in my boat we got to get ready to go to Lake Champlain uh, it's just this shop's a mess I've got dirt bikes everywhere we've got it's just I got a mess in the shop so we're, it's another shop day for me shop day organizing tackle and I just got my new mystery tackle box one of the things most important about it is you're going to save up to 40 percent on a lot of your tackle that you're going to be getting for your fishing get all the new and coolest innovative baits are going to come in that box so it's like having a birthday every month. You get a fresh box of fresh tackle of 40% off every month just shows up at your house. So let's check out what's in my box this week. Dude, who doesn't need terminal tackle? Got the old trash master. And oh dude, this is the bait that everybody's been uh, talking about on social. Fishing line, who doesn't need fishing line? And we got a little creature bait deuce. And they hit us with a Weston what is this? Just a swim. Out here watching it rain and kind of just thinking back on some of the events that we had this year on the FLW tour where I had to fish in the rain. Let's get down to some of the meat and potatoes of what we're talking about when you're talking about fishing in the rain. Let's talk a little bit about what you should start to look for during the rain. If you happen to find yourself having to fish in the rain. All right. So a lot of things are gonna change. You get a storm that rolls through, it's pouring down rain, a lot of things start to change. Depending on the season, it depends on the different types of water or scenarios that you're gonna to start to target when you have a rainstorm or when you're fishing in the rain. Number one, during the spring, uh, I would say from March where I live and during the spring pre-spawn all the way through the summer, one of the things that I like to look for during a heavy rainstorm is feeder creeks. Feeder creeks. When I say feeder creeks, what I mean is it can be a pocket, it can be an actual creek, it can be anything where you have new water flowing into a bigger body of water. Why do I like feeder creeks during a rainstorm? Well, especially during the summertime, that is bringing new, fresh, oxygenated water into the system. What happens when that happens? minnows and shad forage and brim and everything they go to that new fresh oxygenated water if you got food what does that mean you got you got bass yes that's right you will have bass so i'll start to look for feeder creeks feeder creeks will also give me a little off-colored water when you have a rainstorm all of that fresh water in there is a good chance you're going to have off-color water coming into into the system and that allows me to get real sneaky with my bait presentations. Instead of having to flip a drop shot around because the fish can see your bait and hear you coming from so far away, now all of a sudden I can tie on a chatter bait. I can tie on a spinner bait, a crank bait. I can get a little bit more aggressive with my approach, which makes me more efficient through the day so I can cover a lot more water. Something else to think about when you're talking about fishing in the rain, especially during the early spring. We're talking about early pre-spawn. When you have those warm spring rains, you know what happens? You have that warm rain come in and that feeder creek is feeding warmer water into the lake, the river, the pond, and that, that little section, that little micro environment that you have right there within that vicinity of that feeder creek will oftentimes have one, two, three degree warmer water temperatures, which again brings in the food. You got warm oxygenated water in the back of a creek fish already want to be shallow that brings in the shad forage or whatever forage feeding species that you have and what happens is it brings the bass to those areas so feeder creeks hard to beat those guys from spring to summer in my opinion bigger bigger that one.
need that one. That one bad. Ooh, we I tried my best to lose that sucker, boy. God almighty. It wouldn't have been because of the hook, it just would have been where he was hooked. So, we've talked about fishing Peter Creeks in the spring and summer. Uh, we've Let's talk a little bit about fishing during the fall. Where, where I live, we have what's called the fall turnover, or the water starts to stratify. When you have fall turnover, when you look for those Peter Creeks during the winter, a lot of times that turbulent water has more oxygen in it and there's no turnover when you go in the backs of the creeks or you find a feeder creek. So during the fall time, those fish are a little bit more predictable. When you have current and when you have fresh water coming into the system during the fall time, that's also a great time to target feeder creeks when you have a rainstorm. Something else to think about when you're talking about fishing after a rainstorm, because you know, oftentimes maybe it rained, we've got a tournament on Saturday. What happens? Friday night, it pours 17, 11, 10, 23 inches of rain. It blows out your creek. It makes the water come up three foot. Um, you've got trash and debris going everywhere. It totally changes the dynamic of the lake. I've seen it, it's happened to me several times uh, from fishing and club tournaments starting out all the way to the tour level. It never changes. Rain changes the dynamic of the lake of the body of water you fish. So it makes the fishing different. So some of the things that you may encounter, High, water, high rising water. If you've got high water, you know, the water was at full pool, and then it rains three inches, and all of a sudden it's four foot in the bushes. That changes your approach to how you're gonna fish that day. God, dude. Another freaking giant, dude. God dang, dude. Look at that big old thing. Oh my God. Watch, watch out, out oh, watch out, watch out, watch out. Dude, he's so big. What? 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 Also, it can move the bait, especially during the winter time, during cold periods of the year. Maybe you found a pocket that has bait that's just all in the back of this one pocket and they're schooling on bait. They're pushing that bait in there. You know that's the reason the fish is in there. You get a big rainstorm and all of that cool water in the wintertime pushes that bait out in the middle of nowhere. That's something you may have to deal with when you're talking about fishing during a rainstorm. fish or grass fishery sometimes you can have a big rainstorm come and what happens is you're maybe flipping mats and all of a sudden you pull into your area and there's no mats anymore what do you do now um, or maybe you're fishing lily pads and then the water just comes up so fast and so high that now the lily pads are submerged and you can't see any submerged or any vegetation at all scenarios that you're going to run into when you have heavy periods of rain and you have to fish a day after, two days after, when the conditions tend to be at their worst. It's gonna have a lot of new structure in general. You went in the creek, you went in the pocket, you're going down a bank and maybe there was only one dock that was really fishable in that pocket or cove. All of a sudden the water comes up a foot and a half now all of a sudden you're fishing picnic tables, you're fishing lay downs, there's bushes in the water. It changes everything. Fish have more places to hide and, and, and ambush by, so all of a sudden you have more targets. Spreads the fish out and makes fishing a little tougher. For all of these situations, I'm just gonna give you a couple baits that I like to use in, those, in these different scenarios. If you're talking about the summertime and you've got rising water and you've come across one of those situations that I just talked about, I've got two or three baits that I really like to use during the summertime. When you got rising water, I really like to throw a hollow, hollow belly frog. I think that's just a good bait to get in there and get nasty with. You can cover a lot of water with the frog. You get a fish to rise on a frog, you're going to at least know that there was a fish there. I love that about a frog. Even if you don't catch a fish, a lot of times you can get that fish to show himself. And if he shows himself, that can a lot of times give you a clue on what you need to do next. 
fishing further out in the creek, fishing further back in the creek. Slow it down, speed it up. If I can see him, if I know that he bites or at least makes a move towards my bait, I can adjust my tactics accordingly and at least have a better chance of catching a fish. Also during the summertime, it is really hard to be flipping. Flipping, anytime you've got rising water, during the rain or during or after a rainstorm, you're gonna have a lot of those visual targets just like what we talked about. Even if you were flipping mats or something like that, mats or lily pad or some type of aquatic vegetation, that stuff is still there and I can guarantee you the fish are still using them. So it's nothing better to use during high water periods than some type of creature bait, a jig or anything of the like and flipping it and making specific casts to a structure that you can visually see. That's a good one, dude. Oh my God. Look at that thing. Oh God. Yes. Holy crap. Look at that thing. Smoked it, dude. Holy smokes. Dude, holy crap, look at that. Dude, he smoked, dude, he ran me all over this boat. That's, heck yeah. Mm-hmm. Just like that, the day changes. For the spring and the winter time, you're gonna have some of the same situations, but for me, there's two or three baits that really do the job better when you're talking about winter and spring. If any of you guys have watched any of my videos and watched me fish in the past, you know that I really, really love to throw a spinner bait. I'm pretty old school and simple when it comes to bait selection. So when you're talking about dealing with water or high water situations during the winter uh, and during the spring, those cold water periods, it's really hard to beat a spinner bait and a crank bait. Those are two baits that I think you can always put your money on because you're gonna have stained water, you're gonna have high water, you're gonna have a lot of visual targets to cast at. There's nothing better to use than a spinner bait and crank bait for those situations. This is the MR6. Myself, Mark Daniels, the owner of Bill Lewis. Wes Higgins, we all kinda, we wanted a, a crank bait that we could use a little bit deeper. Of course, being from South Carolina, I like balsa wood crank base, so it's got a little bit of that balsa wood inspiration into it. Some of the new inspiration of some of the injected molded products. So it's like throwing the old school wood balsa blades, but it's a lot more durable. You can throw it a lot better. It doesn't helicopter in the, in the sky. I ain't got to tell you on it. You saw what it'll do. I ain't got to sell you nothing on it. Let's just go catch another five pounder. Now, in my part of the country, it is a little bit more unlikely to have those high water situations during the fall time of the year. That's typically when we have our, our drier periods of the year is during the fall. However, we have had that here in the past. And it's a little bit no holds barred when you're talking about fall time fishing. For whatever reason, the, the migration routes of fish during the fall time of the year are just not as drastic and it's not as pronounced as they are during the spring time of the year and fish are a lot less predictable. Uh, so I'm gonna go with everything that I just mentioned can go during the fall time of the year. I've caught fish, depending on how late or early you're talking about, it can be a great top order bite. Sprinter baits work, crank baits work, flipping work. When you're talking about fall time of the year, you're just gonna have to get out there and put in a lot of work. Just about everything is fair game to catch a fish because fish are spread out from 40 foot all the way to four inches and you just gotta figure out how you can get bit when you're talking about the fall time of the year, at least in the southeast. So everything that we just talked about is fair game when you're talking about fishing during the rain or after a rainstorm with rising water in the fall time of the year. Ooh, oh my God, did you see that? I threw in there and then one jumped. As soon as it hit the water, let's see if I can. I know he's over there. He's already showed himself. So we know he's in there. There's so many like leaves and stuff in there. So... Hey. <laughs> Dude, they lock it up so hard that you swear every single one of them. Oh, look how fat that guy is. That's a pretty one. That's not a big one, but man, he is pretty. That fish, all right, I set the hook so hard on that guy. 
That fish was about four pounds when he came up. But after my hook set, I think he's about a pound and three quarters now. But look how fat and healthy that sucker is. You All right, so that's a little bit about trying to learn how to fish in the rain. At some point, you're going to have to fish in the rain. There's no getting around it. Make sure you got some good, good equipment. Know what to look for. Use that rain to your advantage. It's going to create some different scenarios. It's going to create more stain water. You're going to create a lot of current at some point. Um, and those things are things that are going to help you catch fish. So fishing in the rain, it's not all bad. Even though the day I decided not to get out there. <laughs>